You can't even face me when we're having sex. Now, hold on. That is you not facing me. That's so I can picture a real man. Oh! Hmm. You're taking that back. Oh, what? What are you gonna do? Oh, you gonna hit me? Hi everyone, shalom, ciao, namaste. I am Ilana, aka Elmar Superstar, and welcome to my channel. This is PCP, Pop Culture Psychology, Television Analysis Edition. I am very excited for today's video. I wanted to venture into this kind of content for a while, which is getting inside the minds of some very popular film and television characters and providing a better emphasis and understanding for the audience. For the debut segment, I had originally planned on covering Walton Goggins' character, Lee Russell from Vice Principals, and I will be doing that down the road. But recently I rewatched the first season of Fargo and I was really drawn to Martin Freeman's character Lester Nygaard. Plus, he's one of my favorite British actors. By the way, peeps, I'm saying Martin, not Martin. <laughs> the bastardization of the English language and the dumbing of America is a video for another day. But for now, Let's get back to the topic at hand. Martin Freeman's best known for playing Bilbo Baggins in the Hobbit trilogy and Agent Everett K. Ross from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A lot of people know him as Dr. John Watson from BBC Sherlock. And if you go back even further, his breakout role is Tim Canterbury on the UK version of The Office. His counterpart on the US version of The Office is the beloved everyman Jim Halpert. For me, the performance that I associate Martin Freeman with the most is definitely Fargo. It was so well-rounded and polished. I was surprised that he didn't win Outstanding Lead Actor in a miniseries or movie at the 66th Primetime Emmy Award. He did win Outstanding Supporting Actor in a miniseries or movie for Sherlock, but in the former category, he lost to Benedict Cumberbatch, also for Sherlock, but seriously, that lead acting category was super, super tough. If I was a voter, I don't know who I would have picked for the win. I would like to give a slight trigger warning as some heavy topics will be discussed, such as violence, murder, and death. I did try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. There are a few minor ones, but it won't affect viewing the show in too drastic of a manner. With that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, I am so proud to present to you, from man to madness, the rise and fall of Lester Nygaard, and action. Stand your ground, don't sweat the small stuff, and believe in yourself. These are sayings that can instill a sense of perseverance. Perseverance is typically earned through overcoming hardships and misfortunes. However, what happens when this is obtained through all the wrong methods? Is it resilience or resentment? Heroic or psychotic? Perhaps by the end of this video, an answer will be provided as the topic will be further explored in this episode of PCP, Pop Culture Psychology, Television Analysis Edition. In 2014, the beloved Coen Brothers film, Fargo, was finally adapted into a much-anticipated anthology series on FX. The first season captures subtle nuances to the film while simultaneously voyaging into its own story. The show makes use of darker lighting and sharp color rendering to associate with the predominant tone of grimness in contrast to the film's dimly lit cinematography. Dynamic touches of its predecessor are beautifully incorporated into the score, writing, direction, and performances. The character of Lauren Malvo is one that is familiarized and often associated with to Billy Bob Thornton. Cunning, apathetic, and downright unnerving with an oddly sadistic charm. This is certainly Thornton's niche. He is able to excel in these roles and keep the audience guessing if there will ever be an end to his continuous malice, as seen with Fargo. Colin Hanks rises to the occasion as Gus Grimley, a meatier role than his previous work, which has mostly consisted of comedies. As a viewer, it is delightful to see him execute such range and prove his capabilities as an actor. Being the only female lead in the season, Alison Tolman shines in her portrayal of Deputy Molly Salverson, a character that one can really get behind and cheer for, similar to Frances McDormand's Marge Gunderson in the original film. The supporting cast is definitely the cherry on this Sunday of a show. Bob Odenkirk, Keith Carradine, Adam Goldberg, and Oliver Platt play their parts to perfection. Kate Walsh, Glenn Howerton, Keegan-Michael Key, and Jordan Peele all branch out into grittier characters while still managing to integrate comedic elements into their performances. Overall, the first season of Fargo is a compelling and riveting series debut, which is reflected in its accolades. But today is a deep dive analysis of the deuteragonist Lester Nygaard, the rise of an outcast and how his reactions pave the way for his descent into madness. For those familiar with the film, it is established that the character of Lester Nygaard is the incarnation of William H. Macy's Jerry Lundergaard, both being mild-mannered men that are looked down upon by society and wanting more out of their lives despite their abilities of achievement being insurmountable or non-existent. For those that have followed Martin Freeman's body of work, one could loosely associate Lester to the character of Bilbo Baggins from the Hobbit series, a simple man that undergoes a character metamorphosis throughout a journey, with the exception of Bilbo's path not having such an emotionally sinister turn. Freeman is a true thespian that plays Nygaard so effortlessly 
transitioning from uncomfortable quirkiness to spineless calculations. Lester lacks a backbone and is presented early on as a meek pushover. Whether it's taking snide remarks from his wife Pearl that are constantly belittling his masculinity, being harassed and assaulted by a high school bully stuck in the past, or living in the envious shadow of his more successful younger brother. It is due to a chance encounter with Lauren that sets off one of the season's major conflicts and uproots the trajectory of Lester's life. Lauren is one of the few characters to show any decency towards Lester. He tells him that if he does not stand up to the problems of life, it will wash him away. But in retrospect, the writing had been on the walls for Nygaard all along. Even though there was little to no mention of their parents, the sibling rivalry between Lester and his younger brother Charles probably started in childhood with the latter being the favorite. From there, Lester's suppression is noted to begin in high school, having been relentlessly bullied by Sam Hess for four years, with his torment going as far as being shoved into an oil barrel and rolled into the road. Victims of adolescent bullying are prone to suffering from long-term psychological effects. In addition to depression and anxiety, this can also result in poor health, lower income, and a lower quality of life. As is seen with Lester's job, as a life insurance salesman and the fact that he mentioned developing an ulcer due to the stress and trauma of the bullying. On a side note, the character of Sam is a solid example that not only do some bullies never change in nature, but these behaviors are passed down to their children, with Sam's sons cheering on their father's cruel treatment of Lester. Those around Lester are fully aware of how he is so hapless and downtrodden, but rather than attempting to help him, his failures made him an easy target of their derision. Having endured years upon years of emotional and mental abuse that resulted in a damaged psyche, Lester snaps and falls into a downward spiral of murder and deception, starting with killing Pearl. This again ties in with the similarities of Jerry, but while Jerry wanted his wife dead for monetary gains, Lester acted on impulse and set off his inadvertent liberation. As the season progresses, Lester evolves into a more vindictive and unsympathetic being, a stark contrast to how he is first presented as a seemingly kind man. It was due to his timid and squeamish nature that the town police chief decided not to further question him about the recent string of murders. Regardless of Molly's suspicions, working in Lester favor to literally get away with murder. This can be conflicting, as it is gratifying to see Lester coming into his own and having tremendous character development, but the audience knowing the whole time that it was earned through horrible circumstances. Temporarily, this chain of events does result in Lester having a vastly improved quality of life with everything he had ever wanted, an increased confidence, successful business, and loving second wife. But this is short-lived. When one attempts to get ahead by unorthodox and manipulative means, they will always be looking over their shoulder, paranoid about a boomerang effect, the pendulum that causes Lester into sabotaging the second chance he created for himself. The foreshadowing is evident in the pilot episode entitled The Crocodile's Dilemma, with a poster on the wall of the Nygaard basement that reads, what if you're right and they're wrong? Since this is typically the viewpoint of an anti-hero, committing actions for what they perceive as the right reasons despite being inherently wrong, Lester more or less falls into the category of villain protagonist or antagonist. Although there have been instances where Lester has shown remorse for the things that he's done, they are few and far between. His motives solely benefit himself in order to strengthen his newly inherited control, not so much for the thrill of getting away with his crime scot-free, but more in an act of being one step ahead of the game. Lester's actions are not being done for the betterment of others and he will eliminate anybody in his path, which is the cowardice and selfishness that ultimately sealed his fate. In conclusion, what can be learned from Lester's journey? What takeaways are presented? For starters, a smile is not always the flawless facade that one may think. Sometimes, it is a thinly veiled disguise of real problems. Judgment is indeed inevitable and sensitivity is never guaranteed for those that are down on their luck. Through true perseverance, even the most miserable person can create their own happy ending. Lastly, one cannot outrun the ghosts of their past, because at the hands of karma, they will always catch up. As Fargo is currently streaming on Hulu, I advise you all to watch the series and form your own perspective. That is going to be it for today's segment. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next wave, all Martians. Bye.